My friends, welcome back. We are playing Stellaris as the Commonwealth of Man. Wow, I, I had a few questions and I'm actually quite happy about it. I'm happy that people are taking the time to actually um, ask me these things. Um, can it not ask me, um, could you explain how the war mechanics work? Um, because she feels that uh, I may have gone over it. So once you declare war, you will immediately get this uh, icon here. And it will tell you who the defenders are in this war. This um, is of course us because we were declared war upon the uh, hive mind. As well as who are our allies and why they are in the war. So you can see that this fella, he is in here because he had a defensive pack with us. Now you could also have vassals, subjugated empires. They all have their own icon. If you hover over it, it will give you most of the information now your war exhaust this is breaking down in all of this uh, below here even though it says uh, 68 i'm sure there is um they are um just showing the entire number like the whole number but i'm thinking there is probably like zero point something we have an attrition and this is something that will uh, just tick over time over time this will go up and this is a mechanic they made to ensure you will not spend a hundred years in a war which neither side is going to win eventually you will both hit the hundred percent and and that is when uh, your two years uh, time go in so attrition is your basic number it will automatically tick and you have your space battles how are you uh, what is the loss of ships that's why you want to make sure you defend you defend uh, uh, your ships. You're making sure. Look, they have lost 60 ships, 66 according, and, and we only lost 26. So there's a huge difference in there. Your ground battles, how they went, uh, the destruction of planets and, and stuff like that. It all goes down in here. This middle screen. Uh, when did the war start? And um, what has happened during this war? You can see. Look at this. Well, look at that. This is amazing. Look at that, 15% uh, they got as a negative war exhaust. And it's probably all going into it somewhere. But we got a positive war score from that. Uh, and it, it's just, it, you can see what has happened during this entire battle, this entire skirmish. I'm actually, I'm actually not quite sure if this was for them or for us, by the looks of it. Um, I think that might be just for them. Um, Yo. And threat, so your war goal. Now, because we are fighting a hive mind, you don't have to set war goals. You don't have to get your claims. Um, but usually, if your empire, if the empire is too strong, you cannot take it over completely. And the hive mind is uh, is different. If we take all of that territory, it is over. But it's it's having to do with claimings and, and stuff like that. Usually, sometimes this, this goes up into the thousands. I've seen it. Settling, uh, settling status quo is basically... Um, we take what we got. Like, say, if we were to settle status quo right now, we would get all of this territory. Um, but not our station back. Now, if you have wars where you have to claim and say the enemy has a planet... Um, it you will need to take over the planet and um, then the system will actually get your color uh, with us but if you, you have to work with claims you will get this this sort of X shape behind the uh, the icon of the um, of the one you're fighting and we will definitely see that uh, once we are fighting other empires and the hive mind of course um, we are also having claims on these and w once you take over the planets that X will be colored in uh, the systems that are not having that X you will not get as uh, once you do the, um, your peace offering surrendering um, if you click this button the the, the AI the, the goal that they set if they set complete and, and the hive mind devouring swarm is just complete hunger they, they will just take you over completely if you press this button it is over your empire will cease to exist uh, definitely not something that um, you would like at least um, I won't so let's try to avoid hitting the surrender button uh, be completely think about any everything before hitting this because you can see that we have 58 systems 
and we have um, systems with planet. I believe 19 systems of planet by the looks of it. So, and all of that will be lost. So that's a bit of the uh, the war mechanic. So every skirmish will take into account uh, some of these numbers. And it will be in favor or it will be against us. So there is uh, definitely a lot more wars during the series uh, just to uh, take a look at. I'm hoping that I uh, I answered your question now a, a bit more than I did uh, initially. If you need any more, then do ask me. Now... There is, of course, um, another comment from Feline um, Kenick, uh, K9. Yeah, K9. I think that's Feline K9. So, um, in the Fleet Manager, when you click the plus or minus button, I assume that it will add or subtract buttons. Uh, but where do they, these building ships come from? The nearest shipyard? Or, um, now, usually it, they will come from the nearest shipyard. But, however, I have been discovering that. Uh, if we go to our shipyard, look, the Tabat station here, uh, this one, he is uh, currently constructing corvettes for us. That is the nearest base. I've also seen, especially once your empire is getting larger, that they get a bit buggy. And I don't know why that exactly is, but sometimes they will just come from shipyards you don't want. That's why I try to have a shipyard near my front line. The reason for, uh, that you want that is so you can actually reinforce your fleets quite rapidly. And uh, we definitely will be needing that because we are going to be attempting to attack that station. Hopefully we will uh, make it. If not, then it would really look quite dumb on me. So I'm uh, also setting the second question is I'm uh, still confused about the different classes, ships and um, terminology uh, with them like picket, point defense, flag and so on. So... All of your ships have modules, and these modules, they are either missile boats, or you have a missile and you have a, 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 a weapon that will do a damage towards a armor or a shield. You have your interceptor class, which is just those three without the missiles, and your point defense, just aiming to stop fighter ships as well as enemy missiles now the largest your ships are going to get the more modules you'll get actually i believe like the cruiser you will have four and i believe with the battleship you'll get this um uh there was a large weapon i got it's the x weapon i'm not sure after but i believe you got five modules and it is just how you want so your picket is always going to be your point defense and your gunship is always going to be three uh, oh yeah, it doesn't have to be three. I believe that's always going to be three slots for weapons, like you can see over here. And a larger ship, or your art artillery is, is a large ship, but they, they are very effective against larger ships. Now, I was going to go into this um, at a later date, once we actually get to the, uh, the battleships, the titans, and all of that good stuff. Uh, so, I will definitely get more into what kind of ships we're going to be using, why we're going to be using it, and we're going to be looking at enemy fleets some more, and have some fun with those. Uh, final question is, when you're at war, hey, take over a system, uh, must you claim it beforehand? Uh, for it would in, uh, to be in your borders, um, and, and as he doesn't he didn't see it with this war. If you go to claims, and it will t it will tell you a lot. Like you have the greens; these are the systems you can claim all over, and then you'll see these systems that are like with a cross in there. And you can see they may not. Um, we uh, have no needs to claim the system or major threats. So. There are a few, and that's the same with the um, the hives. They are such a threat to the galaxy that the galaxy will allow you to claim their territory without spending influence. And the same goes with the marauders. They are always hostile. You don't have to claim that. So if you just go there and you're claiming, um, if you see that they have a cross, you don't have to claim. As soon as you go to war, you can take the entirety of their territory. And let's take a quick look. Why is that with these fellas? What are you? A devouring swarm. Just like the others. Uh, so, they are so dangerous. And they are, they, these guys are very dangerous. I'm, I feel sorry for them. Um, but I'm hoping that we can stop them when the time arrives. Um, and But for the rest, if you go back to claims, you can see that I actually have one, two, three, four, five claims in this system. 
Um, that was just before we actually got friendly with them. And I'm just going to be keeping them. There's no need to get them. You will not get your influence back. But usually you will have to claim and you then go to, you could go to war and I can't because we are actually in a war and um, these guys are friends. We have a non-aggression pact, that's also why. Um, normally if you go like say to war, declare war, it says you have conquering claims and that's what you, you can, you, you, you can actually humiliate. And I believe that will give you some influence. Make tributary, so they actually are going to be paying you. They're just paying you, just, whatever, they, a percentage of what they make in economy, they will give you. Um, and you have your vassalization, which is, um, they're going to bow down and give you the knee. And whenever you go to war, or whenever they are being declared war upon, they are going to be joining you. Uh, so keep that in mind. Now the Devouring Swarm just has a, a completely different war CV. Uh, I don't think we can actually see that right now. It was there when we declared war. I can't, can't remember what it was again. Uh, but they're just complete hunger CV. They will just do everything. They don't have to claim either. They will just go to war with you and take whatever it is that um, you have. So I'm, I'm hoping that this will... Um, in, in well, shed some light on the decisions and um, I think this is as good as time as any just to uh, to make sure that we are actually unpausing now um, we need to make sure that we are going to be attacking those ships now and let us see those two are all that is left mm, let's click that away we are already aware of that let's see if we can actually sell some no we can't we can't buy any more alloys at the moment I think that's the final ship that's going to be made. We have a lot of stations. I would really like to dial down a few. Also, I would like to switch some in my policies. Uh, hopefully, that is uh, possible. Um, if I click this, they will upgrade. What is it that they are going to be upgrading? Let's take a quick look here. 232. 323. Uh, three. I'm thinking it is most likely the hyperdrive. Um, cricket interceptor 232 um, oh I think that might be the combat roll the swarming uh, but we're going to give it a do or die hopefully it's going to be do and not the die that would be uh, quite horrible they have a lot of missiles in there uh, their shields are weak though Maybe we should have um, try to change a few of our designs. Do we have anything to counter missiles? Because if we do, it will definitely work against them. Let's take a quick look at their fleet. Just You can't check their fleets enough. They have point defense, which I love. They're actually uh, doing that. And they are not starting missiles on their ships yet. But I've got a feeling that they will. So that's quite heavy on the shields and we're quite heavy on the armor. So I'm thinking we actually should be um, fine. Let's see. This is the picket clause actually. But we're not getting those just yet. If we could get the picket clause in there, that would be absolutely fantastic. Um, because we would just uh, counter their missiles, which is uh, glorious. And gorgeous at the same time. Yeah, 7 out of 20. That's a lot of firepower we're actually lacking. Mm. I was hoping some of my allies would um, grant me some minerals. But I think that is not going to be doing. I will not allow these uh, ships to get in here with this station. Because uh, I think it is just going to be time. Once these fleets are there, once those ships are there, we're going in. Okay, what are you going to do? Okay, you're actually just heading back. Uh, can we persuade you to get in here? Actually, quite scared about this. Let me uh, let me hit save you for a second. Otherwise, I would have to start all over again if this was a bad decision. Don't forget, guys. You have a save option. Use it. Trust me. Use those options. It is. There's nothing worse than losing everything that you have. 
uh, especially once you can just reroll. I just want this station back and quite soon as well. Uh, let's see. The, these these fleets aren't too bad just yet, but this this fleet this station needs to go back into my control quite quite soon. Ah, that doesn't look too good, and you'll probably see a lot. I'm actually hoping they have defensive platforms uh, because that will um, get rid of a lot of this firepower quite soon. The admiral died. You prick! You imp! You. Oh, that just, that just such a, that is poor timing. Hmm. Wonder how this will go. It is going to be rather tight, I can tell you that. How will this, so actually it is going into my favor. Now, don't be fooled, this could actually, um, okay, in Tabit there's been uh, some devastation. Yeah, but because we're, we're just killing those guys off. We're just killing them off. But looks of it, we are going to make it. Hopefully. Please fall. Quite quite more fast if you could do so. Please. Just just make sure you go. We need a new Admiral. If that 3k pops in right now, it's it's going to be really horrible. So assign a new leader. Let's recruit a uh, let's recruit one. Um, weapon damage and hull points. Combat disengagement chance is not too keen, but we'll take it anyways. Uh, reinforcing the fleet. We're going to be on passive. We're going to be waiting until the station pops back. Uh, I'm very happy that we got the station back because it is such an important system for us. This is the one that we will have a fleet based. Um, it will have its own fleet. It has to. There we go, so you're back, let's heal up. And this is already like 5k, so they probably won't be attacking it anytime soon. Now, let's slow down, we have a scientific break too, we got the auto cannon, which is absolutely gorgeous. We got the cruiser, oh man, Star Fortress is also nice, and also the armed torpedo. We're going for the cruiser, um, well, if, if you decide to skip a ship, Keep in mind, it might take some time to get it back. So um, think it through. Think it through. Just take your time. Think it through, and and you will get it. Once the cruiser is done, our entire fleet is going to be changing. Uh, let's see. Let's pause it for a second. So we have some housing issues. Mm, well, we could actually uh, use definitely use food, but it looks of it. I allow that to be uh, running out. That is definitely not what I want to be doing. Our economy is suffering. It's suffering really badly. Oh, okay, so what is actually in the negative? And we need to wait for the first one and then we see what is actually in the negative. Everything is in the negative. That's just awesome. Okay, let's um, build you. That will give us uh, housing. Um... Agricultural world, let's build you. Let's focus a tiny bit more on the economy because it has been neglected quite a bit. Uh, we're lacking minerals. Uh, at least we have alloys building up so we can actually sell a few if we were to do that. Um, oh, that is nice. It's not, not quite, look at this station. Now it actually is looking quite, quite lovely. Let us not spend anything for now. And let's just wait until our economy is uh, back up on its feet. So we got six here. What? What is? What's your problem? It's ruined. Um, we're lacking the minerals to change it. Mm, yeah, that's fine for now. Um, this is uh, this is going to be touch and go. Don't worry. I will always destroy my economy. <laughs> I'm very sorry for that. Uh, there's seven jobs still not being filled. There's actually a lot more. Uh, once these are all getting filled, it, it will be a lot better. Uh, this habitability, it doesn't work as well. And we're also now starting to grow new slaves, which is good. Also over here, um, anything else? Wow, there's a lot of housing available. A lot of jobs. It's actually probably costing us more than it should be. What about you? Yeah, let's just keep this up for now. 42 minerals is quite nice. Uh, we actually have ours over one station. And that's bad. 
let's see, what kind of station should we remove? Like this one. Let's downgrade you. That will uh, probably help us in our economy. Once this war is over, we're going to be removing a few and adding some stations somewhere else. But that is going to be for a, another episode. Um, guys, I hope you are enjoying yourself. I know I am. Uh, once our economy is back up on its feet, uh, we can actually um, start moving forward. Um, actually considering closing this war off. Because we're just dragging it out. Um, not being in a war would probably be our best option. So let's settle with the status quo. They will accept it for now. It is peace. Peace in our times. Economy is going up quite nicely. And we're going to be sending you to a base that I would like to keep. And that's this one. You don't have crew core. Dock ships upkeep is negative. So let's send you over here uh, for now. So that won't cost us anything. And let's focus the next few episodes upon our economy and getting our planets. And hopefully eventually um, maybe using some of these species. But these are uplifted. I don't want to use those. Uh, we'll see what we'll do with these planets for now. As for now, guys, thank you all so much for watching. I do hope you enjoyed. See you tomorrow. Have a good one. Bye-bye.